Hey, it is physics time. You know what that means? You love physics. We're doing a unit on communications. Communications. So that doesn't mean you get to just muck around on social media and communicate with everybody. It actually means you've got to do some work. It's chapter 20 in the Sang textbook. And let's be honest, it's actually got some really difficult stuff in it. So let's try and boil it down, make it, make it a wee bit easier. Let's start by talking about modulation. What is modulation? Modulation in a signal is when you change either the amplitude or the frequency. So amplitude modulation is called AM and frequency modulation is called FM. And it's a good idea to sort of understand how this works. But let's just talk about... For starters, why might you use AM, why might you use FM? Well, FM, sound quality is a whole lot better. That's one main reason. So if you listen to music, you don't listen to AM because it sounds like rubbish. Why does it sound like rubbish? It's because when there's electromagnetic interference, like lightning or something, that actually affects the amplitude of a wave. Amplitude is how, how big the wave is, how big the signal is. So if your signal is being determined by the amplitude, and electromagnetic interference affects the amplitude, then your signal becomes rubbish and your music quality is terrible and you don't want to listen to it and you get all sad and you sulk and you cry and that's not good. So what you do is you listen to FM because the frequency of a signal isn't affected by electromagnetic radiation. So there we go. Okay, there are some other, there's some more detail around that too. So FM uh, requires more bandwidth, so that makes it a bit trickier. FM has a more limited range, it's only line of sight, whereas AM, the, the waves can refract around hills and obstacles, so that makes it more versatile. And FM is dreadfully expensive to set up. So some radio stations would love to be FM, they just can't afford it. Anyway, that's a little introduction. Now let's just talk about the types of um, signals that are used. And you need to know these, so let's just quickly go through them. There are there are infra-low waves, and that's what telephone uses. Then there's very low, uh, and that's used for navigation, and that's in the range of sort of 10 kilometers to 100 kilometers. Then there's the uh, low frequency waves, AM radio, wavelengths of around 1 to 10 kilometers. Then there's, uh, there's medium frequency waves, AM radio, again, 100 meter to 1,000 meter wavelength. Then we've got high frequency radio waves, which are around 10 meters to 100 meters, amateur radio, ship communications, that kind of thing. Then we've got very high frequency waves, which is one meter up to 10 meter wavelengths. We've got TV waves, we've got FM radio. Then you start to get into your ultra high frequency waves. You've got um, TV and cell phones. And then we get super high frequency, microwave links and satellite communications, microwave radiation and then you start to get into the higher frequencies again which is going to be used by the 5G network and the 5G network is anything right up to um, around 90 gigahertz I think it is and people are starting to wonder whether those sort of frequencies are going to be bad for people's health and there's a bit of a debate going on. Anyway, that's on to another thing. Let's now talk about digital communication and how we deal with analog and digital um, signals. So, analog signals just look like this. Um, they are useful but they are prone to degeneration and signals can lose quality and get lost so what we do is we convert them to digital and digital is not so easily degraded because it's all boils down to ones and zeros and you can easily clean up a signal and get it back to ones and zeros which um, means the quality is maintained but let's see if we can understand how digital communication actually works to understand digital communication you need to know how a um, digital signal actually works. Actually, I've missed something. I'm going to skip back. I meant to talk about how an AM and an FM signal works. So let's just skip back to AM. I want you to imagine that this is your standard carrier wave. If you were to modulate that, you'd do it by putting a much uh, lower frequency, longer wavelength wave over the top of that and the law of 
superposition means that when two waves add together they give you a resultant wave that is going to be modulated. It's the, there's going to be a larger wavelength in this section and a smaller wavelength in this section. And so you're going to have um, an amplitude that varies. It's larger, then it's smaller, then it's larger again. That's, this isn't a very technical diagram as you can see, but it does give you the basic idea of what amplitude modulation is. Frequency modulation, on the other hand, is harder to draw. It's harder to understand, but we can just see the same sort of idea. You've got a standard wave, and it can be modulated by having the frequency um, compressed here. So there's a higher frequency in this section, and then there's a lower frequency in this section. And so the frequency is being modulated. So those are your two types of modulation, AM and FM, visually. Now, where were we again? We were talking about digital communications. And to understand digital communications, you've got to understand digital signals, which means you've got to understand the whole binary thing, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. So to understand ones and zeros, let's see if we know how we would do this. Zero in binary is just zero. Great, we're doing well. One in binary is one. So far, all is well. But what happens when you get to two? How do you show the number two in binary? Well, there is no such thing as a two in binary. There's only ones and zeros. So you have to go to use two columns. It would be one, zero. And the next one is three. Well, if you add another one here, we get one, one. So that is the same as three. Now, this is a one-bit signal. This is a a two bit, once we get to adding another number to four, it becomes one, zero, zero, then down to five, one, oh, one, what's the next one going to be? One, ten, one, 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 three bit, three bit, the next one, we've run out of options here, to express eight, it's going to be a four bit number, so it's going to be 1000, and you can probably work out what the next one will be. For 9, it'll be 1001. 4 bit, 4 bit, 3 bit, 3 bit, 3 bit, 3 bit, 2 bit, 2 bit, 1 bit, 1 bit. Hopefully, you understand that quick summary. Now, is that all good? Great. All right, put that away. Now, let's talk about how this actually functions if you are sampling. If you're trying to convert an analog, AN here stands for analog, analog signal, this is in volts, and this is time, a time base. You've got a, a signal which is uh, a varying voltage over time. It's a weird looking signal. It's a bit random but well, that's useful for our purpose, you want to convert that to digital. So digital, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4 volts, it's 1, and then it's 1, 0, oh, and then it's 1, 1, then it's 1, 0, oh, oh, because that's how digital works. Now, the thing I would like you to try and understand is that the sampling rate is really important. If we were going to sample every second unit on the time base, whatever this is, milliseconds or something, then you would sample this and you go, okay, that's 1, now, up here, this is right up the top here. Next one, oh, we're back to one again. Next one, um, this one looks like it's at two or one zero. And then the next one here, oh, that looks like it's back at one. So if this is all you were doing, you'd get a line here, a line there, a line here, a line here. Now you can see that a lot of the detail in this signal is lost because your sampling rate just isn't sufficient. It's just not good enough. It's just hopeless. Whoever samples like that should be fired on the spot and sent to the back of Russia or somewhere because that's just not nothing against Russia. But it's very cold and not much goes on. So what you do is you sample more frequently. So, okay, we say this is one this is one, 
this one is probably at about this point here and then we get up to here and then we're back down to perhaps there and then we start stepping up again this is as you can see not a technically expert brilliant diagram but I'm just trying to get a point across now we're right down to possibly zero and suddenly we're up to something very high then we're back here you get the idea there's a lot more detail because the sampling rate is more frequent okay hopefully you understand sampling rate that will do for now